Hi guys. Finally. Sorry, y'all. We wanted to be on here slightly earlier, but that is thus life. We are actually starting about, I would say, eight minutes early, but emails take a while to get sent out to people, and that's what, like, a lot of people um, know that we're Use. actually, you know, broadcasting. <laughs> so uh, we'd like to start a little bit early. So because we, we tend to cover a lot of important stuff in the first five to ten minutes, and sometimes people don't get that email for five to ten minutes. So... <laughs> Just one of those things, but anyway. Yeah, so we 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 run the pre pre show podcast to just talk about random stuff until the time starts. Pretty much. So actually, I'm going to use this time to catch up on Persona. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I'm actually really jealous. <gasps> yeah, I'm actually trying to figure out um, what personas to blend before I start this new dungeon because my. Personas. I'm level 51, mm -hmm. and I'm still using like level 28 personas. Uh, oh, you have not been fusing correctly at all. <laughs> no wonder we've had so much trouble with the dungeons. Yeah, cause I don't know what to fuse. Just, I just, just fuse just randomly. It, just do it. But hello, uh, everybody who is joining us in the chat right now. We're we're doing a little bit of a pre-show to you know get emails out and everything. But welcome, chaos. Welcome. Uh, I pronounced this wrong the last time. Malzatine. Malzatine. I'm gonna call you Ma. <laughs> I'm gonna call you Ma. <laughs> Got it. Ma. <laughs> but, um, I really, I wish I could go and grab my 3DS so I could show people how cute it is. You know what? I'm going to go grab my 3DS so I can show you guys how cute it is. All right, sure. Yeah, I want to see how cute it is. Oh, I'm going to grab my Vita, too. I don't think I've shown my Vita. All right, y'all. Get my headphones back on here. All right, so first, this is the bag to my 3DS. It's cute. It has see, Eiffel wait. Towers on it and stuff. Let me make, wait, 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 wait. Let me make you big. Uh, make me big. So you there can we go. see it. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, that's a cool case. It's much, it's much nicer than my 3DS case, <laughs> uh, which I don't know where it is right now. Then while he's looking for that, this is my 3DS. It has cats on it. <laughs> I like it. I still have the baby 3DS. I'm gonna get the new uh, when I I was gonna upgrade to the XL, and then I'm like, wait, I'll just wait for the new one. But thank you for being so understanding, Ma. I'm glad I could have called yeah, somebody is... my mom. <laughs> <laughs> this is my case, as you can see, it's very boring. Oh yeah, I had to order this from Japan, and then <clears throat> this is my Vita. <laughs> it has flowers on it. You know, I want to make a one of these wild season decals. That That'd would be really see. cool. And yeah. then, while I was in Japan, I got a pink case. Yeah, so. There you go. Pink case. This is mine. This is what they, what's available here. I actually, I actually didn't find any nice cases and stuff in Japan. Um, I went to, um, Big Camp and found. Yeah, that's, that, that's where I got, like, like, I, I got these at Big Camp. Um, these are amazing. Uh, um, I got, I got the pink, um, Vita one at Big Camp, but I ordered this off of PlayAsia. So, but um, mm. yes, this is a blue Yeti. We actually both have blue Yetis. Ooh, such blue Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> Ma, it's okay that you're a guy. We all have faults. <laughs> well, what, what, what's wrong? What, 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 why is Ma justifying the fact that he's a guy? Um, because I'm calling him Ma. Like, oh, Ma. right. <laughs> I was like, I'm so happy I can, you know, call somebody mom on here. And he's like, well, I'm a guy. And I'm like, it's okay. We all have faults. Yeah, I, I went to, to Big Camera um, in... Uh, actually, I went to Yodobashi Camera and Big Camera, both in Ikebukuro and Akiba. I actually walked oh. from... Uh, I think we walked from Shinjuku all the way to Ikebukuro. That was one hell of a walk. That was fun. Oh, I'm sure it was. That's... I don't know my Tokyo geography very well because I never actually got to Tokyo. I was supposed to go, but yeah. <laughs> it's okay. For the next TGS, you can join us. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just 
run around like an idiot, but that's what I do on this podcast and the Let's Play, and apparently people like that, so maybe they'll like it too. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, Ruth, I, I, I love walking. Uh, whenever I go home to London, um, I literally, like, walk all over central London. I love walking, too. I Well, I run, well, I use the elliptical for, like, five miles a day for five days a week. And I'm actually going to start this barre thing that's, like... like oh, it's, yeah, so bar. I, I, I do that. It's the best workout I've ever had. Really? Because I, I bought yeah. three classes for, like, super cheap at this place that's supposed to be super good. So I'm going to try it out, and I think I want to do it. So I'm, would you recommend yeah. doing it, like, um, once a week? Well, I, I, well, when I started doing it, um, no, you, you, if you want to get results, um, you need to do it like three to four times a week. Uh, see, that's the thing. Five classes is $95. Don't they have like a, like, like, like the, the studio I go to, um, we pay 80 bucks um, and it's unlimited for 30 days. See, the unlimited one's 195 I live in Austin where everything is expensive as all get out. <laughs> yeah. But if it was it, it, in I mean, for unlimited, I would absolutely do it. Yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, it, it, it will kill you. Um, it, it's the mm -hmm. most, like, I, I, I hate going to the gym because I never feel like I get a good workout. I've never had a, as good a workout as I have mm -hmm. doing bar classes. See, my thing is, is I like the elliptical so much, I don't really do, like, weight or strengthening. And that, like, I know that this doesn't use actual weights, but I've heard it's really good for strengthening. Oh, yeah. It's, so. it's, it's so, so, so basically, do you know what bar is? Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's um, like a ballet combination with yoga and Pilates. And that's what yeah. this place is anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's what bar is. They combine uh, ballet, yoga, Pilates. So... Uh, you spend half the class literally uh, doing variations of, of uh, um, sort of standing up straight and then down to, uh, I don't know how to explain it, um, basically bum to knees uh, and then up and then up and down, variations of that. Um, uh -huh. Then you spend about 15 to 20 minutes of intense um, abs. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> like 15 minutes, your warm up is upper body. Wow, I am doing it on Friday at eight thirty in the morning. So um, I'll let you know on Monday. <laughs> that yeah, <went. laughs> um, if if they're doing it right, it's basically an hour of nonstop strength training. You get a thirty second break uh, halfway through the workout. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so happy about this. Anyway, it is actually time for us to start. Yes. We are exactly on time, and I'm happy. I, I see more people flooding in, so that must mean that emails are starting to go out. So I will introduce us for anybody who does not know. I am Kelsey. I am the writer and one of the game designers for Wild Season. And this lovely person below me is Sharon. He is our CEO, lead game designer, jack-of-all-trades man, whose name is not Jack, as he pointed out yesterday when I said that. <laughs> but we thinking we want his name to be Jack, because then if he gets some magic beans, he can bring us down a golden goose, and then we can develop whatever we want at any time we want. So, perfect. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but we got um, a pretty interesting show for you today. So, um, first we're going to go over um, a dev diary that actually Sharon just put yeah. out. You want to you want to show the Halloween card first since oh. this is actually going to be our Halloween special. Well, this is my title card for it. Halloween edition. <laughs> so yeah, this is our Halloween edition of the Wild Season podcast. Yes, so um how, how this is going to work today is first we're going to go over um, Sharon's dev diary that he just put out. It's our first one, so we'll explain what it is, where you can find it, what this one actually details, all of that. Then we have some other locations in the game to show you, though I know some people with our pre-alpha demo have seen these locations, but we can explain them a little bit more and you guys can give comments and all of that. And then we're going to have our questions be about Halloween, because it's Halloween in two days. Or one day for you. Ha 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 ha! That was my evil <laughs> laugh. Not a very good evil laugh. But! Yeah, I, think, I, I think I have one here in my app. Let me see. Evil app. Evil laugh. Uh, huh. Oh, it's out of my favorites. 
Trying to, okay, doesn't matter. I have oh. hammer time. Dang it! I was I was gonna actually dance to it, and that was not something to dance to. It was just kind of a thing that happened. Okay, whatever. Chaos is asking, does Wild Season have a Halloween? Does it, Kelsey? Did we make a Halloween or Halloween we, festival? We did not, but there's ways that we could incorporate something like that. That'll be a thought. We'll yeah. have to have a conversation. But as of right now, yeah. there's no Halloween. But at the same time, it's not set on Earth, so nothing that represents Earth holidays is really called their holidays. So. Yeah. Although I can imagine, <laughs> I, I can imagine it would be quite. Um, I think the the oh, I forgot his name. What's the male nurse's name? I'm uh, Gavin. Him. Yes, <laughs> that that would be Gavin's favorite holiday. I think. I think Gavin should just start the holiday. <laughs> yeah. Just be like, I made this holiday, and people are like, we don't care. <laughs> but he would. Uh, DLC Ritz says, hey. Like DLC. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, welcome, everybody. And I am happy. Oh, no, your Chromecast does not like Twitch to take a kick. I did not even know Chromecast could show Twitch. This is how much I don't know. <laughs> well, just it, says, it technically can, because what you do is you open Twitch in your browser, and then you stream uh, your browser to the Chromecast. So. Okay, I see. Uh, Dustin just said that DLC will cost fifty dollars. No. <laughs> more than more than the actual game. I like yes. that. Yes, yes. All of our DLC is going to be more than you actually spend on the game because good marketing, <laughs> right, Maddie? <laughs> Hello, colorfully minded. Welcome. All right. We, you are actually perfectly in time because we are about to go into the dev diary and. We're going to explain all sorts of things about it. So I'm going to bring it up, and Sharon, you can tell me what to do. Oh. Yeah. So so those are, so basically second, uh, those of you that not coming oh. up. You know what? Go on. I'll make it come up. Yeah. So I I didn't get a chance to finish sending it out. Um, I will finish sending it out after this podcast. But it it's already up on the website. It's up on Tumblr. Um, up uh, as a Kickstarter update, so all of those of you um, that are subscribed to Kickstarter will have gotten the email. Um, ooh, GDC is getting a booth at um, Unity is getting a booth at GDC. Um, sorry, distracted. Um, <laughs> and it's also up on the forums. Um, it will be going out in an email update right after this, and on Facebook right after this. Yeah. So um, if you can't really see the text terribly well, we're more going to focus on pictures, but uh, the actual text will be up soon after this is done. So yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, Kelsey's pulling it up on our Tumblr. Yep. Uh, so basically we've started this new dev diary uh, since I've noticed most of the updates are really generally about what's going on at a very high level, but we don't really talk about specific features. Um, so we decided let's put together a dev diary. Um, to coincide with uh, every the end of every sprint, um, and we can tell you guys a little bit more in detail about the specific features, particularly since now we're actually past the point of building the, the foundation and we're actually coding features. We're no longer just building um, the, the base engine where there wasn't really much to talk about. Um, so we're currently working on cooking. Uh, we've been working on this for about a month. Um, I think we're on the we're and then I think we are pretty much on the final stage of working on the cooking. Um, we're just polishing it up, fixing the UI, um, and then we will be moving on to uh, other things. Uh, we also started working on the leveling up mechanic that's currently going on this sprint. And I'll be talking about that in, at the end of this sprint in the next Dev Diary update. Um, so basically, what I talked about in the Dev update is a little bit about the the process we went through with coming up with the cooking mechanic. Um, how we came up with the idea, the sketches. Um, we showed you guys old examples of the UI. Um, as you guys can see here that Kelsey's thrown up. Um, this is what the original UI looked like. It was kind of like a, a notepad or a notebook, but it didn't really fit in, in with the rest of the UI. So we, we scrapped it. We, we looked at the overall layout, and then we, we made some changes. We looked at the user experience and how the user moves from section to section, and we came up with this new um, visuals that you can see here. Um, we also looked at the two cooking methods. So there's there's going to be two cooking modes. Um, the the first cooking mode is recipe mode, where it's relatively straightforward. You have a list of the recipes that you know. Um, you select what you want to cook, and the system will check against um, what ingredients you have um, and what 
tools you have. Um, we This is not yet 100% finished because we have to figure out a way how you can select which um, ingredients you want to use based on quality. Um, since you'll have different quality ingredients available to you, we haven't really looked at that yet. Um, but yeah, you, you basically pick the, it, it shows you how many ingredients you have, um, what tools you have, you confirm it, and it'll create the dish. Um, the other mode is freestyle mode. Um, so, you know, a Harvest Moon Rune Factory, you've always been able to sort of take random ingredients, throw them in, um, pick some tools, and it'll spit out either a failed or a successful recipe. But um, in real life, you know, you can make variations of specific recipes. You can use um, a little bit more of something, a little bit less of something. Um, you can change one ingredient and you still get the same dish, but it just maybe will taste a little bit different. Um, so we wanted to, do, in, to include that in, in freestyle mode. So you will have sort of the base recipe in the recipe mode. And then within that, um, you can copy the recipe in freestyle mode and make and change one or two ingredients. Um, and in many cases, you'll get a variation, um, which will actually affect uh, when you give it to NPC. So let's say an NPC likes pancakes, but they also like oranges. So if you give them an orange flavored pancake, they'll like it more than just pancakes. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, we've also got our spice our seasonings mechanic, which actually doesn't affect the recipe. So if you wanted to make a spicy pancake, um, you could just add a, a spicy, um, uh, what's it called? Um, not condiment. Um, I forgot the word I'm looking for. Condiment? Uh, not spice. No, not spice. Uh, seasoning. There we go. You could add a spicy seasoning. <clears throat> and it wouldn't change the dish, but it would just have a status of this is the, this is the spice that you used. Um, and again, this will affect, this, these are all sort of additional variables that we've included that will affect how judges judge your uh, dishes because we have five, I think at the moment we have five judges and they'll each have sort of their own personality and their own preferences. Um, and whenever you do the cooking festivals, you will need to research the judges a little bit and sort of cater um, to the judges. Um, so it's, it, it, I really wanted to be a little bit more random, um, than the Harvest Moon cooking mechanics where it's kind of just very straightforward. Uh, you just know that you need to create the best star dish as possible, um, and then you're guaranteed to win, um, in most cases. Yep. So, sorry by the way, I actually can't see the chat right now because my <clears> pop-up <throat> kept wanting to be this window instead of the other thing because I don't know how to use OBS, so I'm sorry if anybody said anything on there. <laughs> But going down to yeah, and then these are just oh. some of the icons for the the some of the cooking tools that we have planned. We've got a rolling pin, pot, microwave, um, a whisk, an ice cream maker, um, a medium and low quality frying pan, um, mm -hmm. sushi knife, um, and a boiler. Dun, dun, dun. And this doesn't include. Um, wait, does this have the beer? Oh. No. The, the beer and wine making stuff is not here yet. That, that's actually yep. that's a completely separate mechanic. So uh, we haven't even, we haven't started on that. Yeah. Uh, that's so, also going to be in. Yeah. So, yay. <laughs> so uh, next section, what are we, we're currently working on, like I said, finishing up the cooking mechanics, polishing it up. And we're also working on the skill leveling mechanics. So mm -hmm. uh, the more you do stuff, the more you level up and that will affect uh, stuff that you can do around the world. Yup. Um, and then this is a list of what is still pending to do in our to-do list. And I actually just realized uh, I have not put beer and winemaking on that list. So I need to update that. Yeah. So disappointed, Mr. Um, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's okay. I understand everything. But, yeah, that's our first dev diary. And you said that these are going to be coming out fairly often now, right? Yeah, um, I'm looking to put one out at the end of every sprint, which normally lasts two weeks, so about every two weeks. That's pretty good. So, yeah, look forward to those. And this is, again, our Tumblr page, which is quickfiregames.tumblr.com. If, if our lovely mods could put that in our chat, that would be wonderful. But, yeah, yes. there's that. Woo. So, yeah, that's the dev diary. Uh, you guys can go ahead and read that in detail. Yep. But uh, again, sorry y'all on the not looking at the chat, but I hope you guys liked it. Anyway, 
Um, so the next thing we have is um Oh, so I wanna oh, I wanna yes. uh, I wanna answer uh Ras Brill's question. Um oh, okay. a, ooh, he's a Twitch Turbo user. Ooh. Good on you. Um there will not be actual randomization of the judge preferences, but there will be randomization of which judges um, will judge what festivals. Oh. But anyway, let me figure out what I'm doing here. All right, so next is location. So today we're, we're kind of trying until we run out of businesses to show one business and one household. So today our business is the restaurant. So hopefully you guys can see this fairly well. Um, I kind of wanted to put it in a smaller view instead of having to scroll up and down and maybe nauseate some people. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the restaurant that um, is built while the player is actually in town. So this is more of like an upscale um, establishment that will serve much better food than, say, the inn. So yeah. oh, Chaos just said wild season confirmed moonshine. Oh, my gosh, we should have moonshine. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I'm, I'm totally <laughs> in for moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kick, you're having trouble with the stream? Um, oh, I have Amazon. I actually, um, it is, okay, I think it paused for a second, but I think it's okay now. I'm sorry. Um, Ma, the workers kind of are grumpy in here. Um, not a very good staff. <laughs> yeah, ironic, I, I, ironic considering it's a high-scale restaurant. Yes, well, one, let's just say one character is there for a different reason than being a waitress and is pretty mad about it. <laughs> and then... And the other one is just there because uh, it was the only opening available. Yep, it was the only opening available and, uh, you know, nobody, uh, sometimes people don't want to be a waitress or a waiter and are not good at it and those are those two so have fun with that um, but hey welcome buckaroo happy you're here I'm not sure if you commented before you probably did i'm sorry i didn't notice but i'm happy you're here but do you guys uh like the setup we were kind of going for something a little bit french like kind of merging with mediterranean kind of look and there's there's outdoor seating as well Oh, yes. I should, you know, starting next time, we need to do the exteriors, too. I just realized yes. that. We will do that next time. Exteriors galore. And so the restaurant, actually, it only appears in the second year, right? Yep. So the restaurant is going to be a building that will actually be built while the player is there. But... The inn has food as well, so there will be a food location as soon as you get there. So, Rith, I'm glad you think it looks well. Um, Raz says that it's hard to tell where the door to the storage room actually is. Oh, um, you know, I don't think we have that actually a place you can enter. Visible. Yeah. Yeah, so um, the door is probably, you know, on that um, straight wall, right? Oh, well, I can't actually point my clicker at it. But it's on that straight wall by the, the fridge, probably. But it's just not a location you're going to be going into. There's a lot of, a lot of the stores are going to have some back room that you can see this one. But a lot of, um, a lot of the establishments are going to have like a back door that you can't actually go into, but it's like used for scenes of like a character going back and getting something for you or something like that. But it's not a location that technically matters to the player, like to be able to enter. So. What's what's Dustin asking us to add? I don't know. Please add it. Oh, he's saying please add a door. <laughs> oh. There, there is a um. The clinic upstairs, there is a storage room that you can go into, and it's a wreck. We'll show you guys the clinic <laughs> next week. Yeah, let's show you guys the clinic next week. Let me write this down. So remember, clinic. 
clinic next week. With it sized like this, it's hard to see that the door that is there. Oh, are you saying that it's hard to see the door that goes into the kitchen? Looks pretty obvious to me. Yeah, it looks really obvious to me. Yeah, what we're saying is that the storage room, that room to the very left, like upper left, is not something you can actually enter. Though, I mean, I, I guess we can make it that you can enter if it's that piece of thing. Um, some places feel empty. Uh, you could space out the four tables more. Uh, I guess we could. Yeah. Or, or at least we could add another table that's more towards the back between that, um, that two-person table that's behind the little... Divider. Divider. And the table that's across from it, that's the four. I guess there could be another table there. That would probably... No, but then it'll look too crowded because uh, luxury yeah. restaurants always have a lot of space. Um, so I guess yeah. we could probably move the... On the right side, move the, the round table a little bit to the right and a little bit... Yeah, a little bit to the right. And then the one at the top, a little bit to the back and right. Oh, um, And then okay. that'll space them out a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Does that sound good to everybody? Oh, they're saying that there is a door to the storage. I'm not, I have never seen that door before. Am I crazy? <laughs> we'll look at it. We will, we will yeah. look at it afterwards and we will decide. We'll have a bigger picture and be like, okay, is this <laughs> Kick, I hope it loads for you. I'm sorry you're having trouble. It seems like everybody, like there's one person a week that always has trouble with their Twitch stream, and I feel bad about it. Yeah, blame Amazon. Yep, blame Amazon, because why not? Even though I got Amazon Prime recently, and it's great. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the restaurant. Um, and Buckaroo, we will figure it out. I'm telling you. I'll tweet you about it, because I'm going to actually use Twitter. I'm going to try. It's going to be great. Anyway, so the next place is Maya's house. She's one of our nurses. So hopefully everybody can see this. Um, she has a one-story house, as you can see, and very pastel-y colors, and also a very girly. Yep. She actually kind of sews and stuff in her free time. So, and uh, I particularly like her little stuffed animals above her bed. <laughs> but, and that's Maya sitting there. I love how I'm pointing to it like people can actually see what I'm pointing to. Yeah, Riff, <laughs> it is pixelated. You know, if I did it any bigger than this, it's even more pixelated. But sorry about it being low res. This is the picture I had. And Yeah, hey, we need we, we need to make the stuff internet friendly, otherwise um, my resolution on forever. my computer apparently like messes up some stuff in Twitch. So, like, as Mo was talking, like, whatever I have is weird. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it looks great hey, when I'm looking at it. <laughs> the in-game the in -game stuff is not going to be pixelated. Uh, something about the flooring reminds me of Pinewood floors grooved. They are hell. You know, actually, I have acacia in here that has the grooves. It's wonderful. We actually replaced our floors recently. Let me... Oh, you can't, you can't see it. And I don't think anybody <laughs> cares. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is Maya's house. Franz worked on it. She did a really good job. She also worked on Lily's house, which we showed last week, which Lily's house is kind of my favorite, but, you know. And then I hit my elbow for having preferences. <laughs> but welcome, Toph. I don't think you've been on here before. Welcome. But anyway, yeah, that's that. So those are our locations for this week. Next week, we'll show you the clinic. And I'm not really sure whose house I want to show. Probably a, per a male's house because I feel like we've been chicken it up. It's got to be equals and wonderful. Male's yes. house. Or maybe we can show the kids' house. Ooh, let's show the kids' house. 
Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. All right. Got it written down. All right. So to uh, kind of the final portion of our broadcast. So for people who have not been here before, we do a thing because, well, here's the story of it. So Sharon, lovely Sharon down there, was <laughs> gone for about, I would say a month, a month and a half while you were out traveling around doing games, conventions, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I was running this podcast by myself, and <clears throat> I'm not sure if any of you have noticed who's new. Um, I don't really have any technical knowledge, so there was a lot of things I couldn't talk about or answer because I don't know the answers. So <laughs> I did a game where we just go over really stupid questions about farming, and everybody guesses on the questions, and we assign points, and whoever wins at the end, I sing them a song. Um, whatever they want it to be about. So, boop. This is the Halloween edition, though, instead of a farming edition, because it's Halloween in two days, or one day, if you're Sean. Yeah. But, anyway, so how the game works <laughs> is that, um, when the question comes up, I'll read it out loud. Um, you guys will see it on the screen. And whoever answers correctly first gets the point. So A, B, C, and D, you know, if the answer is B and you answer B first, you get the point. But you don't get the point if you just answer correctly, if that makes sense. So hopefully that makes sense. Dustin will be providing answers and so will we. And usually... Um, Sharon also guesses, but Sharon will be getting points because last time I made him sing if he lost. Not last time, two times ago. <laughs> and I'm not going to do and it. And it was me. awful. <laughs> but I'll sing. Anyway. He cried. Oh, um, Ras, no, this is just about um, Halloween in general. And the farming questions are just about farming in general. It's a thing to do. People think it's fun. I don't know. Anyway. And I gotta. And anyways, I gotta brb. I'm been getting a call. Okay, brb. I will. I will get this done. All right. Question one, y'all. In which area is there a thousand dollar fine for selling silly string on Halloween and Halloween Eve? A. Manhattan. B. Hollywood. C. The Greater Boston area. Or D. The Tri-State area. Do, 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 which one is it? I hope you guys can actually read it, read it, read it, read it. Boop, ba da 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 boop, 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 boop. I sing a song while you guys figure it out, guys figure it out. Do, 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 do. Sharon's back. All right, Sharon. Yes, I'm back. Okay, in which area is there a $1,000 fine for selling silly string on Halloween and Halloween Eve? A, Manhattan, B, Hollywood, C, the greater Boston area, or D, the tri-state area? Can I just say the, the United States? <laughs> <laughs> it's only a specific area in the United States. I don't remember. Um, I, I'm, I'm really bad at these um, stupid law things. Like, I know that there's, I think somewhere in California, there's a law where it's illegal to drive unless someone is walking in front of your vehicle with a white flag. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. But the answer is yeah. actually Hollywood. Huh. Yeah, in Hollywood, it's not allowed. And I know a lot of people aren't here from the States, and I'm sorry. It's just the thing is, is that Halloween is, I guess, it's not... Like, it, it's the only place that Halloween is observed, because it's obviously not. But, like, if you search anything about Halloween, it tends to all be about the United States. I actually tried to look for other places, and it didn't really go that well. But there is really? a question I later. mean, here, huh? here in the Philippines, uh, people go, like, all out. Really? Like That's so cool. Like, well, it, it depends. Like, like for here, it's, it's, it becomes a, a pageantry thing for houses. People go nuts decorating their houses um it's it's like 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 people here love like decorating their houses um huh. they do it for halloween and they do it for christmas and like it's bling bling like 
like in, in where, where my grandparents live, one of our neighbors, um, they literally turn their house into um, a, a scary, like for Halloween, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, um, they, they turn it into a haunted house. Um, and several Ooh. houses do this. Um, and like, the entire house is now like, they, 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 it, it's a huge house. Like, like, like these are like, um, like I don't know, maybe uh, 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 how big is an acre? No, I think an acre is too big. Like uh, these are like huge houses, um, uh -huh. and it's like it, they've turned it into this into this big black tent. They've got dead bodies hanging from the Ooh. from the trees. Um, they've got like stuff everywhere. Um, it's it's yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. See, the thing I I think I think Toph is right because um, my search engine probably just brought up all U.S. things since I was in the U.S. But I was like, like Halloween and other cultures, like not U.S. And it still didn't bring up terribly much. And I was like, okay, so maybe I just don't have um very good googling skills. That's true. Yeah. No. What you what what you should do is when you Google um below the search thing, you go to more uh, and then uh -huh. search tools, and then it's probably set to just search in the US you can uh, make it global. Well, now I know. But there is a question or later big, that has big specific ways. countries or cities. So do like Halloween Spain or Halloween okay. England or Halloween, you know? Yeah, I'll do that next Timbuktu. time. But I was good and there is a question that has pounds in it and I also put it in kilos. So yay. <laughs> I did it. I'm proud of myself. Anyway, question 2. In the United States, how many cases has there been of poisoned or razor-filled candy? So, in the U.S., there's, like, always this thing. Well, just a second. Go through the answers. A, um, 512. B, 245. C, 2. Or D, 15. So I'm going to go for A. Okay. So, there's this, like, every time you go out trick-or-treating, your parents will always be like, don't take anything that doesn't have a wrapper because somebody might have like poisoned it or put a razor in it or something. And it's just one of those things that like kind of, at least everybody in the United States hears like all the time. So, man, so many people are in Canada. That's so cool. Go Canada. I like Canada. But let me make sure everybody answered here before I say. Um, there has actually only been two cases. The answer is C. Oh, wow. Um, it's something that almost never happens. It's, it's more of a myth than it is an actual thing that happens. So I don't know if that's because parents keep throwing out all of their kids' unwrapped candy and so anything that would be like that's never reported because they throw it out anyway? Or, um, I don't know, but that's a thing. But good job. Yeah. I, I, Mom, I remember when I used it. to live, I, I remember when I lived in the U.S., um, I, I was there during Halloween. I love candy corn. Really? See, I don't like candy corn. I always think that I like candy corn, and then I try it again, and I don't like it. <laughs> I, I so I liked it when I was younger, uh, but mm -hmm. then when I grew a little older, I hated it. Mm. Oh, Rith, don't worry. Everybody's impression of the U.S. is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, Top. Thanks for joining us. Sorry, I couldn't stay for the whole game. All right, bye. All right, question three. In Great Britain, hey, I did find something. <laughs> in Great Britain, what are jack-o'-lanterns traditionally made from? A, pumpkins, B, squash, C, watermelon, or D, turnips? Dun, dun, I'm going to say squash. Dun, 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 dun. I'm sorry, your stream keeps dying. Ick, 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 ick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, absolutely seeing that the stores in Hawaii don't actually stock candy corn. Huh. That's so strange. I wonder why that is. <laughs> it's like, how can I not know this? <laughs> well, I think everybody's actually answered. Um, Gala, you actually have it right. It's traditionally with turnips. Really? Mm -hmm. 
That's probably huh. the most surprising thing I have on here. I did not... I, I don't know how common it is now, but, yeah, it was turnips. That was pumpkins. Yep. Uh, well, I know pumpkins are the most common in the United States, but I wasn't sure about other places. But Well, yeah, it's globally now because of the United States influence. Right, yeah. probably. But, yeah, turnips. So, see, I find really, really random things to tell you guys, and then we immediately forget about them after we're done with these quizzes. Because that's how it works. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Rune Factory taught Chaos that. Huh. I didn't know that. Rune Factory had that. Hmm. Oh, Rith say, says it's, um, these days it's pumpkins, at least in Nottingham. Hmm. Good to Are you from Nottingham, Rith? Rith is an Indonesian. No, why... Malaysia now. What? I always think that Rith's in Indonesia, and that's not true. <laughs> it's in Malaysia. But a uh, Nottingham. Yeah. Oh, Gal is saying back in the original countries they didn't have pumpkins. That would make oh, sense. Oh, back in the old world. Yep, yes. old world. All right. Anyway, question four: What cultural phenomenon truly jump started trick or treating in the United States? A. Halloween decoration stores. B. The 1951 Peanuts movie. C. Neighborhood hay rides. Or D. NBC's American Holidays Revealed. Bum, 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 well, I know it's definitely not the last one. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Why would you say that? Oh, cool. My wife studied in Nottingham, not, not Nottingham University. Oh, no. My, my chat just died. Dustin, I'm going to have to really rely on you to know who answered correctly. Sorry, y'all. Yeah, I really hate that the, the, that the chat is not persistent. Like, you just refresh and it reloads. It oh, I know. It's a, it's a really strange thing. You would think that, like, I understand that it doesn't keep histories because that wouldn't make much sense. But, like, at least, like, a cache history or something yeah. that's just, like, for the entirety of the stream would be nice. But um, I'm going to go ahead and say the answer. Hopefully everybody had time. I'm sorry if nobody had time. Um, it was the 1951's Peanut Movie. B. Huh. Yeah. Dustin, do you know who um, had that point? Galamir got it right. Uh... I think Gala is the only one that got it right. Oh. No. Uh, Chaos. No. Oh, uh, Ma, Ma said, said B. B. Uh, Marina said B. Um. Uh, colorfully minded said B. Uh, oh, Rip. Yes. <laughs> yes. Snoopy. The peanuts with Charlie Brown. Uh, Snoopy, Linus, stuff like that. Um, yeah, that movie actually prop popularized trick-or-treating it had already happened before but it wasn't like a, a nationwide thing until that movie came out huh it's interesting all right but Go okay. Charlie Brown. ma got that one good job ma proud of you all right i'm secretly rooting for my mom which is a man <laughs> but <laughs> you know anyway <laughs> going on question five um how is halloween correctly spelled and i will let you guys look at this rather than me spell out all of them because I can't spell out things out loud very well. <laughs> and I don't want to get made fun of. <laughs> You're welcome, Ma. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 Hi, Marina. Welcome. I don't think I saw you before. What is happening? I don't know. But the bump. Welcome, Red Game Hunter. Glad you're here. <laughs> Ma says, I feel like this is a trick or treat question. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like a lot of people have answered, and only one person has answered correctly. Um, Buckaroo, you're right. 
that apostrophe between the two E's is how you correctly spell Halloween. Oh, nice. I got it. Yeah. So, um, Gala, yeah, All Hallows Eve, that's, that's rather, that's not a correct spelling. It's, it's just another way of saying it that's probably more correct. But it's obviously not the... Yeah, old, more old has more history behind it, but like the actual spelling of Halloween. Um, I'm glad you're learning so much, Ma. Yeah, I, I had a lot of yeah, fun actually. Actually, to these. actually, this is useful because now all of you guys can go and impress your dates at, at your Halloween parties. Yes, you can be like, so I was watching this podcast about this farming game, and they do these <laughs> weird questionnaire things for some weird reason, and I learned all about Halloween. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, chaos, um, there's many things wrong with English. Many things. Don't worry about it. It's all right. Yeah, I, per- I personally prefer Scottish. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Gal, that's a good is. point. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have put those quotations. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway. Question six. How many pounds slash kilos of candy are... Be- are purchased, oh, I said R is purchased. Good job, Kelsey. I should use spell check. <laughs> Every year in the United States for Halloween. A, 600 million pounds or 272 million kilos. B, 120 million pounds or 54 million kilos. C, 825 million pounds or 374 million kilos. Or D, 300 million pounds, 136 million kilos. I'm going to go for C. You're going to go for C? Okay. Very interesting choice. <laughs> Raph says that um, you only speak a, a Canadian. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kick, I am so sorry that it's so frustrating. I hope you can hear me say, because whenever you say something, I'm like, I'm sorry. Twitch sucks sometimes. It's thing. Colorfully minded, yes. People really do love candy. I want some candy right now. I don't have any candy in this house. I need to correct this. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think mostly everybody has answered. And the correct answer is A. So 600 million pounds, 272 million kilos. So, Chaos, you got it right. Yay! Man, we have a lot of people. Buckaroo is in the lead, but we have a lot of people who have one point. Usually it's <laughs> not as spread out as this. This is good. This is good. Um, a Colorful Minded says that the, um, which is funny because the only thing about Halloween I really like are the costumes. Ooh. But Rip, yeah, isn't that crazy? That is a lot of weight of candy. <laughs> That's a lot of calories. Uh, yes. I think I think we should have you eat 600 million pounds of candy. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> oh! Um, I thought Ma only had one. Oh! Oh, uh, just kidding. Ma totally has two. I wrote down Ma's name twice for some weird reason. Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Buckaroo. That's why I like to have you here. Set me in line. <laughs> Absolutely says, sorry, I threw off the average. I bought 15 pounds of candy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question seven. What is the term for extreme fear of Halloween? A, holophobia. B, simhinophobia. C, Trephophobia. <laughs> T. Scarophobia. Da 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 I love my ma so much. <laughs> oh, ma, never mind. I don't love you anymore. <laughs> don't take away my 3DS. Oh, Red Game Hunter, that's a good point. Yeah, co- companies do put uh, a lot of candy for people. During Halloween. What is the answer? What is the answer? I don't know. What is the answer? 
what is the answer? Gonna wait for another second so people can get it. I think everybody's answered. Ba, ba. Okay, well, somebody's answered correctly. Marina, you got it right. And so did Colorfully Minded and so did Rass. But since Marina answered first, um, it is the Samhanophobia. I did not pronounce that correctly. I probably will never pronounce that correctly, just like mm -hmm. all phobias. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the thing. I wish it was called holophobia. That would be really hilarious. <laughs> but, yeah. We're gonna get it. Wait, really? Oh, my gosh, chaos. You totally did. I am kidding. See, I swore you had a D. Um... Hey, colorfully minded, we don't use, we don't use, uh, Google here. Stop it. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> sorry, chaos. I am slightly dyslexic, so I totally looked at your answer and thought you said D. It's a thing. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> but anyway... Okay, so before before we go, I'm gonna make sure I have my things right. Okay, Chaos has two points, Buckaroo has two points, Ma has two points, and Gala has one. Am I correct in my assumptions of these things? I think I am. Also, I'm writing this on my Chase thing that's talking about a helpful guide to overdraft protection. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I think that's right. If that's not, I'll change it, y'all. Yes, and it is a three-way tie. Ooh. This, things are getting exciting. All right, question eight. Which famous magician died on Halloween night? A, Lance Burton. B, Harry Houdini. C, David Copperfield. Or D, Dynamo. I want to say Houdini. Who's gonna get it? Who's gonna get it? Who's gonna get it? No. Gala, I don't know if your point went to Ma. You know what, Gala? I'll give you the point. Don't worry about it. Ma. Ma. Ga. Ba. <laughs> I like to nickname people, okay? See? <laughs> All of the usernames is just gonna make me sound stupid. <laughs> okay. A lot of people have answered. The answer is... Actually, Ma, you were the first one to answer correctly. <clears throat> Houdini, you are right, Sharon. I'm always right. Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You didn't win the one time you had to sing. <laughs> I, 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 I allowed myself to lose. That was done on purpose. Oh, oh, uh, you were so happy about <clears throat> that singing. You must be a very good actor. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Houdini died on Halloween night, apparently. I should have actually looked up how that happened. But, uh, yeah, that's the thing. And it happened. So, cool. Probably died during a trick or something, knowing that man. Alright. Oh! Red Gamer Hunter says he thought he died just because of a football player punching him in the gut. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> wow. Anyway, which is the first paper wrapped penny candy made available in the United States. So this is a candy that you can just, it's wrapped in a little piece of paper that you used to be able to buy for a penny. So A, Tootsie Roll, B, Starburst, C, Candy Cigarette, or D, Mini Reese's Cup. Ooh, do, do, do. Ooh I do, don't know, actually. Do, do. I'm going to say maybe a Tootsie Roll. Kick, I'm sorry, just a second. I'm sorry for kicks. I wish that he could see all of our cool 
Halloween things that totally mean something. <laughs> Oh, Twitch has slowed down. Mm. Sorry about that, Chaos. It's okay. Um, you've been around before, so you know how question 10 works. <laughs> do, do, do. I think the... Actually, Rith answered correctly first. It was Tootsie Rolls. I said Tootsie Rolls. Did you? Yeah. I thought you said Not Starburst listening. for some reason. No, okay. I said Tootsie Roll. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, Tootsie Rolls were the first paper-wrapped penny candy made in the United States. So, I am now going to answer for people. Um, so, question 10, we usually decide how many points it's worth. And the person who actually decides this is Dustin. So we could make it worth a thousand points. We could make it worth a million points. We can make it worth one point still, two points, three points, four points. So it's really up to Dustin. You guys could um, suggest things for Dustin if you would like to. But Dustin has the final say. It's my way of keeping my mods entertained. Luca used to do these too. I miss Luca. Not that you're not great, Dustin. I love you. But I miss Luca. Cry. <laughs> Buckaroo, 69 points. Real mature. <laughs> Buckaroo, this could help you win. Because Ma's the one in the um, lead right now. So, uh, uh, Maddie is our new uh, marketing person now. Um, Luca was an intern, so he ended his internship, and now we have Maddie, who is also great. Yeah. But nobody seems to be suggesting things. Dustin, decide. decide. I go 200 points. Okay, Dustin said 20. <laughs> okay, we're going to do 20 then. Your decision with um, a zero off. That works. I'm still disappointed. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're disappointed. Alright, 20 points for the next question. Are we all ready? Alright. Question 10. According to legend, what does it mean when you see a spider on Halloween night? A. You will die tonight. B. A family member will die tonight. C. A loved one is looking over you, or D, nothing. Spiders have nothing to do with Halloween. <laughs> Sorry, I just gave away D. <laughs> well, no, that's not true. If spiders have nothing to do with Halloween, then houses wouldn't be decked in spider webs. I, I, I know. <laughs> I'm going to go with A and B. Okay, interesting choice. Somebody has gotten it correct. Ooh. All right. I think everybody has answered. The answer is C. It means that a loved one is looking over you. Yeah. Trick question. Trick question. Trick question by Kelsey. I've never done those before. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? Congratulations, Rith. You are the winner of the game with 21 points. I wonder how you got it so fast. Alright, so of course, as it always is, we're gonna go back to our title screen now. As it always is, of course, um, Rith, you get to decide what kind of song you want. I can sing a song in your honor. I can sing a song about Halloween. I can sing a song about anything you want. So, and everybody can laugh at me. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, I actually, I originally actually wanted to do both YouTube and Twitch at the same time, but I don't know how we can stream simultaneously. 
I'm going to put us back on webcams. There we go. Yeah, does, does OBS allow simultaneous streaming? Um, not that I am seeing from anything of my directions, but I wouldn't be surprised because I don't know much about OBS. Maybe there's a plugin. Yeah. Okay, Ritz says, here's a hard one. Sing a song about Halloween in the street. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> Thank you so much for doing this stream. We talked about a lot about Halloween. We learned stuff like Houdini died, and people eat lots of candy. And also spiders are loved ones. I don't know, but it was pretty great. And Rip won, but we're all winners, according to Ma, because Ma knows best, because she's my <laughs> mom, apparently. Oh, Chaos, I'm sorry I'm leaving, but I hope you can see me sing a little bit. I'm sorry, but this is the end of my song. Okay, there we go. My song's done. <laughs> Yay! Yep, I'm sure you guys are all happy you just heard that. But that is, I believe all that we have for you unless you have any more announcements Sharon, before we go no that's it <laughs> oh yeah uh, all of those of you in the alpha program um stay tuned there's another email coming up after this yay emails <laughs> buckaroo kelsey is the siren of quick fire games <laughs> <laughs> yes the quick fire siren that's that's gonna go on your on your bio by the way kelsey and on the website <sighs> okay <laughs> or, or would it be quick fire yodeler? I haven't no. yodeled in a while. Yodeler. There, I yodeled. <laughs> but thank you all so much for joining us. I really hope everybody has a good Halloween and a good yeah. rest of your week. Now, we do a Let's Play of Harvest Moon on Tuesdays at the same time, 9 p.m. Central Time in America, 10 a.m. in the Philippines. Um, however, I think that we might be doing, um, a new game soon because we might have run our course in Harvest Moon. So if you guys have any suggestions on what kind of games we should do, that would be wonderful. I'll put my email in after we're done. Um, send those to me. We're just trying to have stuff that has at least something that would be a component in um, wild season so like we were thinking about maybe doing Skyrim to look at like marriage stuff that Skyrim does or I was going to do River see, King. But my, my problem with Skyrim is it doesn't do a really good job with marriage. It doesn't. It River, really doesn't. River King actually might be a good option because um, we're struggling with figuring out the fishing mechanics. Oh um it's definitely it's fishing mechanics are probably going to be way too complicated but we can certainly look at it and see it so we can do yeah, we can get some ideas um, um rune factory 2 could be interesting also or dark cloud oh if we could get dark cloud we should free dark cloud if we could get dark cloud that that's my choice. Well, I'm, I'm, my, my thing with Dark Cloud, I'm thinking maybe we should leave that for after Wild Season. Um, mm, because okay. I think it, it, it probably has more um, useful information for, for Wild Season 2 uh, rather than 1, since most of the mechanics there are not something we can implement anymore mm. in Wild Season 1. Okay. But, oh, Rith, yeah, you did send me that zombie farming game. I will definitely take another look at that. But, and then, of course... Moving forward. Okay. Wait! Oh, wait! Yeah. Wait, doesn't... When is... I got it! When is Harvest Moon coming out? November 4th. Let's just do that. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. We just need to, we just need to figure out how to stream on a 3DS. Yeah, that, that's the issue. <laughs> well, we can practice on Sunday. Um, I will try something with my stream, um, see if the tissue box method works. Okay. Yeah. So, we have a couple of options. We'll surprise you guys. We'll <laughs> be like, hey, yo, this is what we're doing now, apparently. But anyway, um, yeah. Thank you for all of those ideas. Those are very good ideas. Um, State of Decay, I'm scared to play. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, uh, Red Game, yeah, we, we have too many ideas for Wild Season 1 um, that we just started a, 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 a thread internally for mm -hmm. basically anything that we can do for Wild Season 1, let's put it in a page for Wild Season 2. Yeah, Wild Season 2 is our mythical beast that doesn't actually exist in any, like, way or shape or form yet. We're just, like, throwing around ideas for it and everything that people suggest that we're like, oh, that would be so good, but we can't put in Wild Season 1. Wild Season 2 is that little compartment that it goes in in our minds. <laughs> and apparently yeah. now our page. So, yay. But anyway... Thank you very much for joining us again. I am Kelsey. I am the writer and one of the game designers for the game. And then this is Sharon, who's our CEO. Sharon of all trades, somebody called you. So that's what I'm going to start calling <laughs> The Sharon of Sharon. all trades. And one of our, I like uh, it. Uh, he's our lead game designer. So uh, thank you all for joining us. And I hope you guys have a good night. Good night. All right. See you guys soon. Bye. Uh,